Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for better disguises next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Mystique, a build I've actually wanted to make since the beginning of this channel and always lined up with the release of New Mutants. That movie has been delayed so many times now, so so has the video. But because of those delays, we have Changeling in an official book, so hey, happy accidents. I'm sorry, who are you? I'm blue. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to change our shape to other more interesting shapes or less interesting shapes because it helps to blend in with a crowd. Next, we need to be nimble with the ability to fight and keep it light, like potential demonetization levels of light. It's a PG-13 movie, it should be fine, right? Support the Patreon just in case, please and thank you. Finally, we need to take advantage of your deceptive talents, getting in close and taking out people before they can even realize what's happening. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your dexterity and wisdom modifier high enough for multi-classing. Charisma will be number one. Disguises are nice, but your impressions also have to be on point if you're gonna infiltrate Jeff Bezos. Hey, it's your boy, Jeff, I hate the poor. Nailed it. Dexterity next, your guns are almost as accurate as my impressions of powerful people like Angela Merkel. Hey, it's your girl, Angela Merkel, you dumb jerkle. Two for two. Wisdom after that, we need it for multi-classing and insight will help you lie to people. Follow that up with intelligence. Raven is a smarty pants, even if she does not wear pants. Constitution is a bit low. If you do your job right, you shouldn't get hit, but that means you might not be great at taking hits. But we're gonna dump strength instead, as dumping strength is second nature. You can do it without even thinking about it. I do it twice a week and it doesn't hurt me at all. For race, changeling is pretty much the only thing that you can possibly be, giving you plus two charisma and plus one to wisdom, because that's the stat I chose, but if you rolled weird and have other odd stats, round them off instead, I guess. Believe it or not, the rubber face race is pretty malleable. Speaking of, you'll get Shape Changer, letting you change your appearance as an action. It has to be a creature you've seen before and you don't get any larger or smaller or get any extra arms. Basically, Mystique can't turn into Spiral. Also, sorry to everyone who wants a Spiral build now that I brought Spiral up, but I feel like it's kind of obscure and I wouldn't be able to get the footage, so I'm sorry. Spiral is cool. Anyway, you have changeling instincts, which let you grab two skills from a short list. Insight and persuasion will help you with your infiltration, and the spy background will give you stealth and deception, also helping with the infiltration. Maybe it wasn't clear, but this build is gonna be very good at getting into places it's not supposed to be. For even more skills, kick things off as a rogue for four skills from the rogue list. Athletics, acrobatics, sleight of hand, and performance will work great for you. Athletics will neutralize your low strength score. Acrobatics and sleight of hand will give you more nimbleness, and performance will help you keep your cover while you're pretending to be someone else. We're not going to take the actor feat as it's pretty redundant with Changeling, and we can get expertise and deception and performance to double your proficiency bonus when you're using those skills. If you can use those to get advantage on your attack roll, you can also use Sneak Attack to add a d6 of damage to your hit, provided you're using a rogue-approved finesse or ranged weapon. Guns are ranged even when you fire them from point-blank range. You also get this bonus when you have an ally within 5 feet. There's a reason it's called a Brotherhood. You're all about family. It isn't a tradition to multi-class at level 2, but damn it, it should be. First level monks get unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. Armor isn't really your thing, at least not the heavy stuff, though it could be an issue if you needed to pretend to be War Machine, which thanks to corporate mergers can actually happen now. Pretty cool. But if you wear armor, you can't use martial arts, which lets you make an unarmed attack that deals 1d4 damage and uses your dexterity modifier instead of your strength and allows you to make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with an unarmed attack or monk weapon as your action. Monk weapons are any simple weapon without the heavy, two-handed, or special property, so daggers, quarter staves, and short swords, light hammers, the world is your oyster, as long as an oyster to you means using your dexterity modifier. Keep in mind that finesse is its own property, so even though it's defined as you get to use your dexterity instead of strength, that does not mean that things that fit that definition are necessarily finesse. So basically, unless it says finesse, you can't use it for your sneak attack. Unless you're in my game, then you can. It's cool. I like it. Why not? But because it doesn't gel super well with Rogue, let's leave Monk alone for now and head back to Rogue. Second level Rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. If your cover's blown, just get out of there. Everyone is going to be shapeshifter paranoid for like a week, and it's no fun. Wait until the good guys are trusting their friends again, then come in and soil that over and over again. They'll never feel safe, have trouble sleeping, and never open up to each other. Shapeshifters are mean. But hey, so is stabbing people, and everyone does that in D&D. Third level Rogues can choose a roguish archetype and 
kind of assassin is perfect for people who infiltrate and bamboozle. You get proficiency with disguise kits and poisoner's kits. I'd imagine the latter is more useful and not as redundant. There's going to be some redundancies here, but it's okay. It's still going to be very good. Assassinate will help it be good as it gives you advantage on attacks against creatures who haven't acted in initiative yet, which means your sneak attack is a go. And you get to count any attack against a surprise creature as a critical hit, doubling your sneak attack die as well. Speaking of, you now have 2d6 sneak attack damage, or 4d6, when the enemy falls for your Captain America impression. Hey, it's me, Captain America. I sure like not kissing Bucky Barnes on the mouth. God, I'm good at these. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement. Bump that charisma score because that's the most in-character move, even though it would probably be better to invest in dexterity. We care about flavor here, not nutrition. Pro tip, mix a tablespoon of honey into your butter to make everything taste better and build your characters for role playing to make every game more fun. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce damage from an attack by half as long as you can see the source of damage. Just remember to hide your scars though, it's a rookie mistake if that's what gets you caught. Your sneak attack bumps up to 3d6 or 6d6 when you crit with a surprise round. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Acrobatics can help you get out of grapples, lord knows your strength ain't gonna do it, and persuasion will help you convince mutants to sign up with the Brotherhood, almost as well as the Sentinels do when they destroy entire neighborhoods. Systems of power use violence to prevent the loss of their power. In the X-Men universe. I mean... That's what I was talking about. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage from failed deck saves and no damage from successful ones. If Pyro wants that burning hands thing going, you're gonna be fine. Let him fire away. Follow up that dodge with a sneak attack that deals 4d6 or 8d6 with a critical for your own fireball level of damage. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement, cap off your charisma and start working on your dexterity. Plus two modifier on an eighth level rogue, kinda sad. Change it up at home if you want, I'm not gonna judge you. Ninth level assassin, Assassins get infiltration expertise, letting you spend 7 days and 25 gold to establish a new identity that will remain unquestioned unless you screw it up with roleplay. You can't be someone who already exists with this, really helps to be the player that takes notes for this one. This is another one of those redundancies, but hey, 5d6 sneak attack or 10d6 with a critical hit ain't anything to scoff at. 10th level rogues get an ability score improvement, which is kind of a weird thing, even fighters don't get one here. Bump your dexterity to be better at stabbing and better at avoiding being stabbed from the Canadian whose superpower is having knives in his hands and being immortal? Who wrote this? 11th level rogues get reliable talent, meaning the lowest you can roll on an ability with which you have proficiency is a 10. You also still get to add your modifier, so for all your charisma skills, the lowest you can get is a 23 at the moment and 27 by the end of the build. Sneak attack also increases to 66 or 12 d6 with that surprise round critical. 12th level rogues get another ability score improvement. We can almost cap off the dexterity. Hopefully you rolled well and you can get it there. Patience is important for an infiltration though, so you'll get it don't worry 13th level assassins get imposter letting you copy someone's whole vibe without falter but even when someone suspects you you'll have advantage on charisma checks to deceive them again kind of redundant with just being a changeling but 7d6 sneak attack isn't and neither is 14d6 when you pop out of your form to stab someone who thought you were storm hi it's me aurora monroe anybody got a mint i just ate some onion rings that one wasn't great i'll admit that 14th level rogues get blind sense, meaning you're aware of the location of any invisible creature within 10 feet of you, so sorry Sue Storm. She thought she was sneaky, but you can't bamboozle a bamboozler. 15th level rogues get slippery mind, giving you proficiency with wisdom saving throws. Charm person, hold person, both classic Professor X moves, and both wisdom saves you no longer have to worry about. But he should worry about 8d6 sneak attack damage or 16d6 when Cyclops turns out to be an enemy. Hey, it's a me, Scott Sum! infidelity 16th level rogues get another ability score improvement camp off the dexterity and move on to wisdom to be harder to hit and not just because you look like tom hanks seriously who's gonna hit tom hanks that's a solid strat 17th level assassins get death strike meaning that when you hit a creature that's surprised they have to make a constitution saving throw equal to eight plus your proficiency bonus and dexterity modifier failing that you get to double the damage of the attack since your sneak attack is now 9d6 a critical hit with a hand crossbow would be 19d6 plus 5 piercing damage which would double again to be the equivalent of 38d6 plus 10 you're good at getting close to people and people close to you end up getting killed. 18th level rogues are better at dealing with other rogues thanks to elusive, which means nobody can get advantage on an attack roll against you while you're incapacitated. You're prone to bad. You're flanked, not happening. They cast true strike in a 19th level encounter? 
Why? Our capstone is the 19th level of Rogue for one last ability score improvement. Round off anything odd because odd numbers are bad. Modifiers change on the even numbers. I really wish I could hit odd numbers with 10d6 sneak attack damage, or 20d6 with a crit, or 40d6 if they fail a death strike saving throw. But alas, I am not Mystique. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're a liar, a deceiver, and enemies are likely to fall for your tricks over and over again thanks to reliable talent and expertise. Death Strike can also totally wipe people out before a fight even starts, and your deception will help you get in close to deliver that blow. Finally, you're hard to pin down with unarmored defense, uncanny dodge, and evasion helping you get away when you need to. For weaknesses, your damage isn't magical, so certain things could resist or be fully immune to your big old hit. Some creatures are also immune to being surprised, so that bamboozle won't be that helpful. Finally, your HP is low, with barely over 100 HP, meaning that once your cover's blown, you need to get out. Thankfully, you're very good at getting away. Infiltrate any group you want to, take out your target, then make your getaway. Just make sure you don't run into anyone who's ready for you, or you're gonna be exercised. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Remember to join the Patreon if you want to vote for future polls, and subscribe to Tulak and Mango if you just want more Tulak in your life.